Well, today hasn't really gone according to plan. Ugh, this might be worse than I thought. Oh, I hate it when it's my fault. Shoot. Am I kicking you up? One down, two down, set, one down, two down. Hey! I guess they call that puppy love. Safety first, Lucy. Good morning guys, it's Monday, it's another cold one. We're in for a week of really cold weather. I am reminded on weeks like this why I do not lamb, try not to lamb in January and February. Praying that still happens. There is still a chance at the end of the month. I've been watching intently on some udders and I there's one that's starting to look like it's maybe blossomed a bit, but for the most part, they still seem pretty dry. Tomorrow is when these rams uh, and use have their ultimate split, their divorce, their breakup, they get separated and then these ewes will be scanned in about six weeks after that. So today is just chores, but what I really wanna focus on is across the road I'm gonna weigh my market lambs again. And I also wanna spend a few minutes in the office going over how many lambs I sold this year. Um, it's tricky when I'm doing numbers with, you know, how many lambs did you sell in a year because you're, you are selling lambs that were born from the year before. See if we can figure something out, uh, some logic and, and some numbers for you guys. I'm going to brave the cold and get some chores done first. Today hasn't really gone according to plan. Uh, just nicely getting chores done across the road. I came over across here to do chores and my water lines are frozen. Um, all weekend I was only running with one per side and today there's none. So that's how cold it's getting. This, I've never worn like a scarf or a wild rag or whatever they're called, but this came from Ireland and I love it. So I'm wearing that. I wore it snowmobiling yesterday too and it's, uh, it's just really light, so I don't feel restricted. All right, so I'm gonna thaw water um, and then get going on the task, which is weighing, weighing these market lambs again. <laughs> Add double the time that you're expecting in the winter because nothing, nothing ever really goes according to plan. Hi, Cinnamon. What are you doing? Hi, baby. So, yeah, I'll, I basically, it'll be, I've got heat. Oh, I don't have heat cord on this one. So I have heat, heat cord on this one. So it's nice and warm. I think it's just frozen. Oh, I think all I gotta do is get this spot right here thawed. Cause I can push it now and I couldn't push it this morning. As long as everything's okay up there. But everything's plugged in, so it should be okay. So as long as that's not frozen here. That's the only spot where I couldn't reach this far enough. I gotta do some investigating. Ugh, 
This might be worse than I thought. Okay, so I've been at this for quite a while. I had an extra heat cord. There was one little spot here. So I literally have a six foot cord wrapped around, I don't know, a two foot section, not even. And then there was a spot here. It just wasn't tight right here. So it's tight. I did see some water drip at a joint. Uh, so I don't know really what else to do. I did finally, I shut the chimneys so they're open maybe uh, two or three inches. And I did shut my tube off because it's just blowing in real, real cold air. I'm just learning this system. I'm learning, you know, what to do with this airbag. Maybe when it's this bitter cold, you don't even need it going because the air is just fresh enough. So maybe it's one of those things to, uh, to a certain temperature you need them. And then when it's real cold, maybe you don't. I don't know what else really to do to conserve heat. If I close those chimneys tight, I'll just kind of show you here. So they're open just like a, just a crack. If I close that right tight, which I could, cause there's still a little bit of a crack on the sides. Then what I'm concerned is just it gets really moist in here because the animals are so warm, the air is so cold, and then you run into moisture problems and that's what creates the bugs in the litter. And they've been doing so good, I don't wanna ruin them. So it's just, I'm gonna have to play around today. But I think I'm gonna wave the white flag. I got water going on this side, so that side's good. But this side is still a mystery. I don't know what's going on. I've got the spots where it looks like it could be frozen. I've been running the heat gun on it for a while and it's hot to the touch. So they should be thawed and they're not. So I think I'm gonna give in and uh, put a, a big pail of water in here and just keep filling the water for today. They're thirsty. So I'm gonna do that before I do anything else today. Well, upon further investigation, I found my problem. This cord stopped working, this heat tape. This elbow has, uh, I don't know, split overnight. This is a big cord. But for now, I'm gonna shut the water off so we don't have any more. Oh, I can't even, because I think it's frozen. Shoot, this is not good. Is it just not plugged? Uh-oh. Oh, darn it. Oh, I hate it when it's my fault. Shoot. Okay, well, we will plug it in. Well, you guys, my tap is freed up. Makes me happy. So my heat tape is working. I've got this kind of iceberg off the corner, off this elbow. I did bring an extra elbow out in case I have to replace this. I'm wondering if there's just been a little tiny leak on this. I'm hoping so. I hope it's not a, a full on split, which would make sense because it's not like there's no puddle. And I did check the elbow up there because this elbow split on me uh, two years ago and made one heck of a mess. And I, and I don't feel any moisture up there either. So I'm hoping that's okay. So yeah, we just wait till this is kind of thawed out. They're surrounding the water bowl, so I'm just gonna see if we've actually thawed this line. Looks promising. Oh yeah, yes. You're welcome. Well, it's uh, 4.30, so I should have been long done this job, but we are, we are gonna weigh these lambs. <laughs> Doggone it, that's the last thing I do today. So I'm just firing up the Gallagher. And uh, I'm gonna, trying to think what I'm gonna keep this week. The markets were still strong last week, so I think I'll uh, keep 100 pounds or over. They're just gonna go plop in the left. I gotta pail them water because this water line does not have any heat tape on it.
Hello, you guys. I finished, had them all in here, and yeah, the water line is frozen. They were going through a pail way too fast, so I split their pen in half because both water bowls, I got the back water bowl unfroze, so I just, I put the, the remainder of this group in the back. So they have their own feeder, their own hay, their own, their own water. 22 of these guys ready to be shipped and they get the front pen until Wednesday night. I'll go over um, lamb information tomorrow, I think. It's getting really late, and I have to bed across the road still, those uh, little lambs. Uh, but I can give you a quick update of, as to what I got today. 22 lambs, uh, average weight was 100, 100, almost 108 pounds, so uh, probably Wednesday, uh, Thursday morning they'll probably bring me around 101 or 102, I would think. All right, I'm going to clean up here. I'm really tired. I think I'll just see you guys tomorrow. We'll have a full day tomorrow of more sheep stuff. Hey guys, it's Tuesday today. The day has gone much better, but it, it is so cold outside. But no frozen water today. I got that whole barn across the road thawed out and all the water was working this morning. So that was some really nice news first thing this morning. I have spent uh, a good chunk of the morning going over my uh, lamb sales for 2020. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really disappointed. I felt like this year felt like a really big improvement. Unfortunately, the data doesn't lie. So I've, I've just taken some really rough numbers. I know you guys are gonna ask me like how every you has performed, can I pull that data out? I'm sure I can. Um, but it takes me a long time to figure out how to do that stuff on my Gallagher. So for now, I'm just going to give you just some real raw data. Um, I had 786 lambs born this year out of four lambing groups. So what I ended up doing is for, for all the lambs sold in 2020, two of the groups lambed in, in uh, late 2019. So I took the lambs that were born in September 2019, December 2019, April 2020 and June 2020. I used all those lambs and they fell really nicely into uh, lamb sales between January 1st, 2020 and December 31st, 2020. So um, it was a perfect four groups of four lambing groups in that uh, period. So that was really nice. But I had a couple kind of not great lambing groups. One was last September. I only had 59 used lambs. So I don't even remember. I actually have to go back to my videos to see what happened there. And my June group this year, even though I had 95 used lamb, I didn't have, I had a lot of singles. I think I was only at like 1.5 lambs per ewe born, which already is way under where I'd like to be. My goal for lambs uh, sold in a year is two lambs per you so two lambs for every you that lambs in a year then um, my goal for lambs born is usually that high like two point it'd have to be between 2.3 and 2.5 which i just didn't have this year so yeah so out of so i had 786 lambs born out of i believe only 378 ewes lambs marketed out of that 786 was only 622 and 79 of them were my replacement use and 79 replacement use out of what i probably had in the barn this year was probably close to 20 percent but i am gonna keep more from this september group that's over there right now that you you saw me vaccinate last week i don't know what to say i thought i was doing better but um so in 2020 I had 2.08 lambs born per ewe, which isn't terrible. I would love to get that up to about 2.4 if I could, or 2.3, or get my mortality down. So have more lambs either come out alive and number two, keep them alive. Adding that ventilation across the road is hopefully gonna help that end of it dramatically. Lambs sold per ewe then was only 1.65. And my goal for that is two. My average weight for the year, and this includes my replacement use, and my replacement use, the last time I weigh them are usually only between, you know, 80 pounds and probably 100, a little bit over 100. So that brings down the average a little bit. But my average weight of all lambs sold is 101 pounds. And the average price, and again, I just threw my replacement use into this price. I don't charge myself for it, but that's probably what I would get if I had them on the market. I just would charge people market price. I made $267 for every US sold this year. It's nice to sit down and go through these numbers to 
really get your feet grounded again and uh, start pointing you in in where you need to be. I think the thing that stands out really quickly is just lambs born per you um, and lambs sold per you. I have to get those numbers closer together. Right now I have to set up because Jess is going to help me this afternoon and we are going to have the big breakup. So the boys are going to go back into their pen and the ewes are going to go back to their own pen. So that's going to take us all afternoon. I only have Jess for about two hours and then she has to help Mark. So I'm going to go get set up for that. Okay. Am I keeping you up? My lovely assistant. We are going to be marriage counselors and break up this marriage for yet another uh, season. So this is our steel rams. We're gonna move those out first. We're gonna take the rams and put them here. And we're just gonna keep adding the rams to the other groups. There's a group in there and a group over there to move over. So quite a few to shake out today, but should be, it should go pretty easy. Boys go straight, girls go away. Go boy, girl.
Everything is uh, cleaned up, bedded up. It's so quiet. All of my pens are now organized. So these are the ones that are, oh, seriously, lamb. Little showstopper. These are the next ones to lamb. So they'll stay in here until I wean this group over there and get it cleaned out. And then they'll be moved over there and then they're good to go for lambing. Boys are back in their pen. I actually put the younger ones with the older ones now that they're, they've been in the barn here with me since the fall. I guess they call that puppy love. Good news, Billy showed me a little bit of affection today. So there's hope yet that we'll become friends. Oh, Billy. No? Not for the camera? Okay. Here's the ewe lamb pen. So they're back to where they were when the rams were with them. But what I did do is I threw the June ewe lambs behind the water gate. So these ewe lambs are all together, but they're separated by a gate. So now hopefully the pregnant ones and the ones left to breed in April will be all separated. Uh, so they'll be in their own management group now and they will stay together until they lamb and then I will probably add them back in with mature ewes. Um, I like to keep ewe lambs all by themselves through the whole process until they've had their first lamb. After that, then, they, then they're, mature, they're considered a mature ewe in my barn and they are treated like all the rest. This is the other group. There's about 87 in here and I think there was 54 ewe lambs. So pretty big groups and I'm hoping I'm gonna have June lambs. So we'll scan these guys in six weeks, Rebecca will come back and uh, either give us good news or bad. Hi baby. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Let's go get warmed up. Come on. 